next speaker is a graduate student, actually, Chu Yu Chen from the Department of Molecular Microbiology and Immunology at USC. Uh, an oral abstract about novel CD4 vectors uh, to disrupt the latent reservoir. Thank you. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, I would like to first thank the organizers to give me this uh, opportunity to present my work. Um, as we learn a lot from these few days, CRISPR-Cas9 can be a powerful gene editing tool to disrupt the latent HIV. And the aim of this uh, study is to develop a CD4 targeted viral vector to deliver this CRISPR-Cas9 into the latent reservoir in vivo. So I would like to introduce a little bit about our targeting strategy, uh, which is using paramyxal virus engineering. So uh, like the Simbus virus we've heard from the previous talk today, paramyxal virus also use two separated protein to control the virus entry. The H and G protein control the target binding, and F protein control the cell virus membrane fusion. This allows us to manipulate the target binding um, on the H or G protein without affecting the fusion function. So to create a CD4 targeted vector, uh, the natural receptor binding site on the H or G protein were mutated, and then the CD4 binding ligand were at fused to this um, target binding protein. And the difference here um, from the Simbus virus is that this targeting ligand is not covalent bind to the uh, binding protein. It is engineered to be a fusion um, protein and display the targeting ligand. So in our lab, there are two paramyxal virus we use for the targeted vector production. One is measles virus, the other is the Nipah virus that we already heard about too in the previous talk. Um, we uh, pursue type lentiviral vector with these two different viruses to uh, facilitate the uh, transgene delivery. Uh, Nipah virus pseudotyping were considered to be a better pseudotype system because of its ability to generate higher titer vectors. And in addition, um, due to lack of the vaccination, uh, Nipah virus uh, pseudotype vector are less sensitive to the uh, antibody neutralization from the human serum. That being said, a CD4 targeted vector was already uh, actually developed in 2015 by Bacos Group. This vector uh, was generated by fuse, fusion of CD4 binding darping on top of the uh, target binding protein. And I'll tell you more about darping in the next slide. So in their study, they evaluate the in vivo targeting ability of this vector in a stimulated mouse model. So they found that in this stimulated system, this vector was able to specifically transduce CD4 expressing cells in vivo in the spleen tissue up to about 2%. However, now the question is, um, HIV latent reservoir mostly reside in resting population. And also, like Dr. Krumer mentioned before, lentiviral vector transduced resting cells in vivo can be challenging. Therefore, an important question that we want to ask built on top of this study is whether this darping measles vector is able to transduce resting CD4 T cells in vivo without stimulation. So before we go into data, I would want to, uh, I'd like to introduce more about this targeting ligand we're using. So DARPing is an anchoring repeat protein that is able to bind to its target at a nanomolar range affinity. And it has very stable structure, therefore it's a great targeting ligand. However, the complex uh, structure and the big size um, make it very expensive to construct a DARPing library to select a more optimal or a new uh, binder. Therefore, it kind of limits your uh, future application if you want to target other receptors. So our lab has been um, exploring alternative ligand to create the targeted vector. And one of the options we've been looking into is this fibronectin type 3 domain, FN3. This scaffold protein is also um, able to bind to its target with a nanomolar range affinity, and it also has stable structure. 
However, the size of FN3 is much smaller than the darping. And from the vector production point of view, we hypothesize that this smaller scaffold protein can facilitate the ligand incorporation into the targeted vector. In addition, due to the smaller size, a smaller library is required for new ligand selection. Therefore, it will facilitate future application if you want to select binder for more receptor target. So, in my talk, I'm, I'm going to show data from these two different targeted vectors. One is the darping measles vector that we, we recreate in the lab, and the other is the fibronectin NIPA vector that we newly developed. And we're going to compare these targeted vectors with a non-targeted vector, uh, lentiviral vector pursued type by the VSVG. Um, we also learned this from the previous talk. Uh, the importance of this negative control is that VSVG, we all know it has broad tropism. However, it has very low transduction efficiency on resting cells due to lack of the LDR receptors on these cell types. So my first experiment I'm going to show you is um, how all these three uh, different vectors behave on the resting PBMC. So from the data, we can see um, both CD4 targeted vector, when compared to VSVG, are able to transduce specifically the CD4 expressing cells on the resting, in the resting PBMC. So next, we want to ask, how would these targeted vectors behave in the in vivo model? And the mouse model, we're using a CD34 humanized mouse model. In these mice, after uh, CD34 engraftment, we can identify different T cell type population. The upper panel here shows a staining by different activation markers, CD69, CD25, uh, and HLADR. From here, we can identify resting T cell population in this mouse model to about 60%. And then the bottom panel, we show the staining to distinguish different T cell subtypes, including naive and uh, TCM and TEM. Now, these T cell types are important for the study because um, these are the main cell type that the HIV reservoir are found. So it's important to ask whether our uh, targeted vector is able to get into these T cell types. So in this experiment, um, we injected the CD34 mice with these two different vectors with the highest dose available. And then a week later, we harvest different tissue, analyze the GFP expression for the transduction efficiency. And from the data, we can see in different tissue, including blood, spleen, lymph node, and bone marrow, both vectors are able to transduce CD4 T cells in the in vivo setup. And the darping vector here, due to a higher dose injection, it was able to achieve 2 to 3 to 4 percent of the transduction in vivo in different tissues. So when we look more closely into the specificity, again, like what we saw in ex vivo experiment, these two vectors are very specific, only transduce CD4 expressing cells in vivo. So now we're asking the important question whether these vectors are um, able to get into resting T cells in vivo using the activation marker I showed you before. So we identify the resting T cell population, analyze the GFP expression in these uh, resting T cell uh, population, and then we found that, yes, both of the C4 targeted vectors are able to get into resting T cells. And again, we're seeing a better transduction with the darping measles vector, but it's, uh, it could be because we're just injecting a higher dose during the experiment. And then finally, when I ask whether these are uh, vectors are able to get into CD4 memory T cells. So again, the uh, staining panel were used to identify naive uh, central memory T cells and factor memory T cells. And then we analyzed the GFP expression in these three different T cell subtypes. And um, again, we found these two uh, CD4 targeted vectors are able to transduce memory T cells in vivo. And when we compare it to the naive T cells, the vectors are more preferred to go into memory T cells. So um, here's the summary. Um, first, we uh, show that paramyxal virus entry mechanism allows a retargeting strategy. And second, in our hand, both DARPI measles virus and fibronectin uh, Nipah virus can target resting and memory T cells in vivo. 
And the third, um, we uh, showed that fibronectin is a promise uh, targeting ligand due to its smaller size and stability facilitate library generation, and it could be used to target other uh, latent reservoir marker potentially in the future. An important ongoing work right now is to test the delivery of CRISPR-Cas9 using this targeted vector. Um, I would like to thank Dr. Paul Kennan for her mentoring and also the lab members in the Kennan lab, and as well as the Taiwan USC Fellowship to support my PhD study here in the US. Um, here is my summary for community. Uh, the key question here we're asking is how to deliver gene editing tool to HIV-infected cells to destroy the viral DNA. And our key finding is by re-engineering proteins from different viruses, we show that two different delivery systems can uh, specifically get into HIV target cells. And this is related to cure because HIV DNA can persist in human cells and not um, removed by current HIV treatment. And so that uh, it is a bottleneck for cure. The very of gene editing tool to these cells uh, can remove the HIV DNA. And we should be excited about this finding because we now have a delivery system that can be used to specifically mm -hmm. deliver gene editing tool to destroy HIV and DNA from the infected cells. Thank you very much. I would like, to, uh, I would have to take questions. Um, maybe time for one question. I know mine. I don't see anybody else. But, oh, no, 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 you, you lose. Well. <laughs> I just wondered about your fibronectin targeted yeah. vector. Doesn't mm -hmm. it give off target on other human cells? Because in the humanized mice, you only have the human hematopoietic system. Mm -hmm. Do you know that or did you test that? Oh, so this fibronectin was uh, selected specifically for CD4 binding. So in our in vivo data, we don't see transduction in other cell type. Uh, so it's very specific for CD4 expressing cells. Thank you. Yeah.